Buckle up because Apple just announced iPhone 15 Pro and it's not exactly what we expected. They also announced multiple updates in their product lineup, including Apple Watch Series 9, Apple Watch Ultra 2, iPhone 15, iPhone 15 Plus, and iPhone 15 Pro Max. We're gonna focus mainly on the iPhone 15 Pro. I'm gonna show you everything that's changed, what stayed the same, and whether I'm personally upgrading or not. Plus, we're gonna be diving into the materials, design, specs, and some specific features. So as for materials, we have a grade five titanium, which looks amazing, and it's never been done on an iPhone before. It has a PVD coating, which helps with corrosion and like abrasion, which is nice. We have aluminum throughout the rest of the body, and then we have the ceramic shield glass on the front, as well as a matte glass on the back. We're pretty familiar with that. As for the design, we have a black, white, blue, and natural titanium colorway. I personally love the black. I think all of them look really, really good. You'll also notice there is a contoured edge, which is a little bit of a slight rounded edge, which makes it more comfortable in the hand. There also are thinner bezels like we predicted, which look really, really good. And then we have a brand new action button that will replace the mute switch. I'm excited to see what people use this for. We'll talk more about that later. For the volume buttons, we expected them to be haptic. They're still your standard volume button. Nothing changed there. You can see we have the dynamic island on the 15 Pro. We also have the Super Retina XDR display. And at the bottom, the lightning port is now replaced by a USB-C port with USB 3, and we still have the three camera array. Now, before we dive into the specs, I wanna share with you another dope product that dropped today as well, and that's the Utility Jogger from Onset Black. If you create content and haven't heard of them, what are you doing? They create technical apparel for creatives and their new jogger is super impressive. It has a custom bolt tightening anglet, lens cleaning inner cloth, battery pouch, cargo pockets, high rib ankle cuff, plus they're just super comfortable. I've been a huge fan of Onset Black since the beginning and my closet is already full of their apparel. So if you're interested in getting a pair of joggers while supplies last, click the link in the description and thank you Onset Black for sponsoring this video. So diving into the specs, we have a 6.1 inch display, which is similar to last year's, although with thinner bezels, it may feel a little bit bigger. The weight actually decreased because of the titanium to 187 grams, which is quite a bit lighter than the 206 grams in the 14 Pro. We also have a brand new A17 Pro chip, which seems to boost performance dramatically, especially for those that love to game or any other type of processing on the phone. We also have an IP68 rating for water splash and dust resistance. Now for the cameras, we got a few changes. The main camera is still 48 megapixels, but we do get the option to choose between 24, 28, and 35 millimeters. That's really nice. We also have a larger sensor, which as a videographer and a content creator, that is much appreciated. That will be better in low light and we'll just have a cleaner looking image. The ultra wide camera is 12 megapixels with a 13 millimeter lens equivalent, as well as an aperture of 2.2. Now for the telephoto lens, we have a 12 megapixel camera with 48 or 77 millimeter lens equivalent, which means an aperture of 1.7 or 2.8 respectively. But if you get the Pro Max and spend a little bit more money, you can get the 120 millimeter lens equivalent, which is like five to six times zoom. This is insane because the aperture is still a very wide 2.8. That's pretty impressive for even a you know professional camera. So I'm interested to see those that do purchase this, what they can do with it and how it looks in real world testing. As for features, we have a brand new action button, which is customizable. You can choose to do shortcuts, open the camera app, start a timer, maybe a voice recording. I usually keep my phone on mute most of the time anyways. So it'll be nice to have that real estate taken up with something a little bit more useful. We also finally have USB-C. So now me and my Android friends can charge our phones using the same cable. We can also transfer data speeds a lot faster if you do get the optional cable, which is typical Apple charging for every little thing. And it's just nice to be able to have one cord to charge every single device. This is not innovation. This is just Apple finally getting on board with what we've wanted this whole time. Then we also have spatial video, which is a pretty niche feature. You won't be able to fully realize its potential unless you buy a almost $4,000 VR AR headset, the Apple Vision Pro, which we'll be releasing next year. So if you happen to buy it, please let me know when you do get it. If it's worth it, what it looks like, I will not be upgrading just for that. Then there's standby. They shared this with the keynote 
pretty sure this is just an iOS 17 feature that will be released to all iPhones that can get the update. So don't buy it for that, but it is an interesting feature to use your phone as an alarm clock with relevant information that's useful. Another great feature for content creators will be ProRes at 4K up to 60 frames per second. This is if you do use an external recorder. I love this because we need buttery smooth footage and that's nice to be able to just send that directly to a computer using your iPhone though as the camera. And that's a really nice option. I love how phones are getting better and better, even though they still don't quite replace professional cameras depending on what you're filming. And then we have the log video recording. Not sure how this will look with the colors, but that will be nice to have a log profile to then color grade. I personally shoot log on my Sony a7S III. So I'm curious to see what that looks like on the 15 Pro. As for features that didn't change, we still have Dynamic Island, which I personally like. It's a fun way to interact with notifications. We have ProMotion, which is the 120 Hertz adaptive refresh rate. We also have the always on display, which I never use and just kills your battery life, but you use that if you like to. And then there's the battery life itself, which is still 23, 24 hours of video playback. So no improvements there, unfortunately. And it still costs starting 999, but I personally think most people will want to get the 256 gigabyte if you're shooting ProRes or if you're shooting raw, maybe even higher than that. Depends on your workflow, you do what's best for you. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments if you think the 15 Pro is worth upgrading to. This is a typical Apple release where we get slight bumps and improvement, a couple changes, and then some new features that help us know it's the new one. In this case would be thinner bezels, the action button, and the new colors with the titanium finish, which does look really good, but you'll have to decide if that's worth upgrading for you. As for whether I'm upgrading or not, my wife currently has the iPhone 11 and really wants my 14 Pro. So I'll be snagging the 15 Pro to give her the 14 Pro. So if you don't wanna miss the unboxing, review and comparison of those phones, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you wanna see how these super cool custom animations were made, check out Owen Jenkins Design. He's a really talented creator and a personal friend of mine. I'll link him in the description. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Should I get a silicon case or should I get like a more minimalist, like thin case? Let me know your favorite cases because I love Apple silicon cases or the silicone cases, whatever, but um, they just like get beat up and I'd love to find something either like this or better and thinner because I really love that minimalist look.